Okay, well, let's start with interest rates. So we got the lowest interest rates in living memory, if you like, um, whilst inflation is sitting somewhere around 4 or 5%, depending on which number you use. Even if you use transitly and you use kind of tips inflation, break-even inflation, sits around 25 2.6%. So in our sort of models, we're thinking that we are going to see at least 100 basis point pickup in rates or more, um, you know, given where, where we are today. So that, I think, is a headwind for markets. Uh, in terms of the earnings growth, it's been, you know, been really impressive. Uh, we've just gone through another earnings season. Um, and obviously, there's been some sort of supply bottlenecks. But if you look at the level of demand and you know, look at parts of our portfolio like Microsoft and Alphabet and just keep delivering in terms of their numbers, our consumer stocks are delivering. So earnings growth is good. Uh, but arguably, you could say that profit margins are elevated. Um, relative to history as well, and, and so, are, so are market multiples relative to history as well. I mean, S&P 500 sitting at, call it 20, 21 times earnings. So I think it's going to be hard to get the returns we've got from the market in the past, and you're just going to have to be very, very selective. I mean, I've been a fan of both of those, you know, for a long period of time, and they haven't, haven't really worked, um, both on, on CAPE and the Buffett and the CAPE. But I think from a common sense point of view, they, they do make sense. You know, the, the, the valuation of the market relative to a long-term earnings measure adjusted for inflation does make sense to me to some degree, um, as does the valuation of the market relative to market cap. Um, but they haven't worked. Empirically, they haven't worked. So theoretically, they, they sound good. But empirically, over the last decade, they just haven't worked. Um, and I, think, I think there's an easy way to think about this. Just think about the psychology of the market. It's so much easier. And you can see, just look, look around you, look at... Look at house prices, look at Tesla, look at Bitcoin, look at, you know, whatever, wherever you want to look, um, investor psychology is very, very bullish. And when it's like that, you're not likely to find bargains. If you had said in 2007 that interest rates would be where they are today, um, you know, and people would think it's normal that the Fed's printing 120 billion of, you know, QE every month, you know, people would have locked you up and put you in a straitjacket. Um, if you'd say, you know, I've heard the value is going to snap back for a long period of time argument. It hasn't. Um, I'm sure at some point it will. I guess we just don't take a view because it's, it's that these things are hard to predict. So, I mean, I know a lot of energy is expended looking at markets, looking at themes, looking at economics. But actually, from our viewpoint, it's so much easier to look at a business and just say, what's this business's competitive advantage? What do we think that competitive advantage looks like in five years? What are the earnings going to be in five years? And what's a reasonable multiple to put on those earnings? That is so much easier, a lot less exciting. I mean, predicting markets and themes and valuations is where we spend all our time. But your probabilities of being right for most investors there is very low. You'll never find us starting an investment meeting with you know, inflation numbers or Chinese production numbers or whatever, the, what the Fed said lately. Um, I mean, one of the examples I like to give to clients, if, I think there's been 138 meetings of the Fed since Google listed. And think of all the energy that's been expended every time the Fed speaks and everyone looks through the minutes and what does this word mean exactly? What is transitory, transient? or um, When all you had to do was say, look at the search engine. It has completely revolutionized the internet. It is the gateway to the internet, it has massive market share. You know, it's so much easier to analyze that than what's going through, you know, central bank governor's head. Um, and that's why I just find looking at businesses easier. But to answer your, your first question, we try and hedge our bets a bit. So if you look at the portfolio, we have businesses that have secular growth. So let's say we're in a low growth world. Well, over the last five years, the organic growth organic revenue growth of the businesses we own has been around 7%. So I think the portfolio is positioned to give you natural growth if we're in that low growth deflationary world. However, let's say we're in the high inflation world and we're moving into a new era. You know, the portfolio has a 55% gross margin. So we have serious pricing power. You know, the average listed business has a 30, 35% gross margin. So we've kind of got a, a foot in both camps, if you like. What we're trying to do is buy businesses that have top line secular growth and high margins and pricing power. Well, I guess you just have to look at the last results. So for a two trillion market cap, 
you know, for most of their core divisions. So if you look at Google search, YouTube and cloud, they're all growing high 30s over 40%. So they're still growing very nicely. Um, now, you know, built into our numbers, we think that business can easily double their earnings over the next five years. Um, now that's three, three times roughly of what the market's going to be growing at. Now if you take the, the total valuation of Alphabet, the group, and you strip out the cash they've got and you know, adjust for the loss-making businesses, they can't be worth a negative value. For core Google, you're paying 24 times earnings. Now I can find lots of listed businesses where organic growth is probably 5 or 6% that are trading north of 40 times earnings. So relative to what else is on offer out there, I still think um, you're not paying a huge amount for the growth that you're getting today. Now obviously in the future, if that growth slows, we'll adjust then. But as we stand today, they, they're delivering unbelievable growth and their competitive advantage is getting deeper.